Hello ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another very special Out of the Fast Lane. I am your host, Brady Hauser. On today's show, uh, we have ne the sportsman driver Nick Scavey on the show. He races at Fonda and other tracks, I gotta find out. I, 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 have, I don't know much on his background, but I'll find that out tonight with you guys. Uh, but before we start, I found another family something cool I found. Oh, I'm, I dropped him. Well, well, I guess I'm not perfect. <laughs> Uh, well, a bunch of old race cards. We got Sherry Barkley. I don't know. I can't read that. A whole bunch of cards. And that was pretty cool. Kenny Wallace. There's a rookie card. Another girl. Kenny Brown Jr. I don't know. I, if any of you guys know about Kenny Brown Jr., I'd like to know a little background about him. Uh, I, don't, I don't really know much about him. So if any of you guys know about him, Please help me out. I'm trying to figure out a little bit about him. Uh, Jim Sauter, Ricky Craven, Bill Elliott, Daryl Waltrip, Bob Snedeker, and Larry Pearson. They are all, I thought I found them in my, because I have a bunch of old classic cars that I have, and they all came with those cards, so I figured I would uh, show you guys that. Um, as some of you guys may have known, last year, it was before Fonda, um, Nick Scavey was heading down to Fonda a race on a Saturday night, and he his trailer ended up sparking and catching on fire. They were able to save the car. Um, they had a it pretty much was down to sheet metal by the, end of, by the time it was done. It was a total loss, and uh, we're gonna ask him a little bit about that. Um, figure out how you guys that because that's big because that was, everybody knows about that because that was huge. He did run a place in the trailer, which that's a good thing. So he will be back. He will be racing again this year. Uh, yeah, I thought that was pretty. I I thought that was pretty uh, scary at the beginning, and then pretty amazing that he's gonna be racing again this year. Um, it's pretty awesome. And uh, hold on. So everybody, Darlington is racing tonight with the NASCAR cars. Um, Ty Dillon and Ryan Priest are on the front row. Harvick starting 20th, Logano starting 3rd, Newman starting up the top 10, I don't know who else is starting. Um, so yeah, we're going to get Nick on the show now, and um, just give me a quick second. Alright, we're going to give him a quick second to get ready. Um... So I got asked a question last week by uh, one of my buddies um, about like what I want to be when I grow up. You know, Scott Huber asked me that. He, so now I think about it. Yes, camera work is probably where I'm going to go best. So I like I like suggestions and stuff. So if anybody has any of them, let me know. Uh, and yeah, so we're going to get Nick Scavey on the show now. And hold on. Wait, one more thing. Hold on, before we start. Not, not, not procrastinating. I'm just got a couple more things I wanted to show. Anybody know another background? I just wanted to know if anybody knows about Dale Planchak, whatever his name is. Dale Planek, I think it is. Uh, please let me know. I want to learn a little bit about him too, because there's a couple of drivers out there I don't know, and I would like to learn. So, yeah, that's cool. Uh, all right, we're gonna get him on the show now. And here we go. All right. Hello. Hey. Welcome to the show. What's up? Uh, hold on. Connecting video. I'm just gonna wait till your video starts. Okay. You're good. Uh, is it? Um, uh, I don't know. It might not connect. Well, uh, I'm working. There we go. There we go. All right. Uh, what have you been doing during this pandemic to stay healthy and race ready? Um, honestly, just been working a whole lot more than uh, than than usual. Um, just mm. you know, getting funds together for for tires and stuff like that, and trying to buy ahead, and mm. you know, just just things like that. Mm. You know, little things. You know, it, especially with with everything going on nowadays with you know, the racing community, everything, everything's evolving. So, um, 
you know, we're just getting we're getting little things to make us a little better here mm-hmm. and there. What yeah. we feel like we could do. Yeah. If racetracks were to open soon, how would you feel if they had no fans in the stands? <sighs> so the fans are a big part of racing, obviously, you know. Um, without the fans there, mm-hmm. it's hard for the track voters themselves to make any money. Um, you know, you got, you know, the food and, and you know, just the entries and, and, you know, even, you know, the beer and, you know things like that just it, it's hard for a track promoter mm-hmm. to keep the doors open yeah. off of just the drivers you know and having to pay pay the drivers you know their payouts every night it's it's incredibly difficult for them to do that um they don't make any money uh it's 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 tough mm-hmm. i don't know that it's the smartest thing to do but i'd be if, if they were to say go ahead and, and do that then you know as long as we can hit the track i'm, I'm cool with it okay yeah it's same here um, how did your racing career start and at what age? Uh, when I was seven years old, uh, I had gotten into, um, a flat cart up at Kroger Creek. Um, we had started out with the Wilders, Corey Wilder and, uh, um, uh, Jeremy Wilder. Mm-hmm. Um, my stepfather was, you know, real good friends with them. Um, so I st- just started, you know, started there and it was just always something I wanted to do. And I, I grew up in David Town's garage. You know, ever since I can really remember, so racing's just been—it's always been around me, and it's always something I've wanted to do. Mm-hmm. Uh, what is uh, when did so? What was it like for your first time to go into at Fonda in a sportsman? What was it like going into the first turn for the first time? Um, I was scared to death, to be honest with you. You know, I mm-hmm. uh, obviously it, it was you know something that I knew was going to happen and all, but a lot. You know, the first night I was ever in the race car, I made seven laps, and then the uh, um, the water pump broke, and it, mm-hmm. uh, the belts came off for the the whole, just the, all the, the front of the, the front of the motor. All the belts got got thrown, mm-hmm. and uh, I didn't have any power steering going down the front straightaway. I didn't know it until I got to turn one, and never being in a car before, I didn't know what to do. I jammed on the brakes and ended up rolling three times in turn one, first time in the car. So you barely, so you barely rolled when you first so you okay. Yeah, so I, you've I experienced the bad stuff out of my system first, hopefully. So you've experienced the first turn tumble there. Yeah, um, it's no good. Yeah. How many wins do you have to this date? Like all together or just in, like, the, in the sports a- sense? Anything all together. I can get I don't I'm not real sure in the go karts. Uh, I know I have a plaque for a sixty fifth career win in go karts. Uh, that was just obviously like just go karts. Um mm-hmm. That I raced another couple of years in go-karts after that, and then I got five at, at Fonda Speedway in the big cars. Mm-hmm. Uh, I got three with the, the rookie sportsmen's too, I guess you could count those. Yeah. So last year, everybody knew about it because it was pretty much the biggest story, one of the biggest stories down at Fonda this past year. Uh, you ex- experienced your trailer caught on fire. What was that like for you as a driver, <laughs> um, knowing that? Yeah, it, it's, uh, you know... It, it, it really just took the wind out of our sails, you know. Um, I can remember driving down the racetrack where my stepfather, my my uh, head crew guy, uh, Zach Zarek, uh, myself, and, you know, both of our girlfriends were, were with us going down the road. And, uh, you know, having a good old time listening to uh, Scarth Brooks and uh, my stepfather noticed the smoke coming from the trailer. And, um, you know, he, he put the pedal down and got us to the winter circle. And by the time we got to the winter circle, the trailer was... Mm-hmm. It was it was going and uh, you know, I ended up getting her the trailer, cut the straps for the the winch and the tires, and ended up getting the car out. Um, yeah. But you know, going going into that night, obviously I had no, I didn't have a fire suit, I didn't have a helmet, I didn't have anything to go racing. I had, I had a race car and a steering wheel. That was the only thing I had. Everything we had was in the trailer. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, and we we begged, borrowed, and stole for the last night to to get the car down to the racetrack. You know, our, our good buddy Jack Leonard. Um, thank God for him. He he had given us you know some some stuff that we needed, and he uh, he towed the car down the racetrack and helped us. Actually, we trashed the front end that night out too, and he actually rebuilt the whole front end by himself. So, mm-hmm. um, you no, know, it, it's definitely a eye opening experience. You know, you never really it doesn't happen often, but yeah, it, it just it goes to show you that it doesn't can happen. It happens. Yeah. How do you feel about all the uh, iRacing that was happening until everything opened back up now 
And did you get to try eye racing at all? Um, I'll answer the second part first. I I have tried it. Um, it's a lot of fun. Um, if I wasn't so broke trying to get everything back together for yeah. the actual race car, I'd probably have one of those. Mm. Um, I think it's pretty neat. Uh, you know, th- they're still able to bring uh, racing on, on a different platform, obviously. Mm. Um, to the community, everybody's you know itching to see some racing. So um, I think it's real cool is what they're doing. Um, you know, anything to get people behind the wheel and get people you know excited and and you know even some people that didn't really think racing was that neat, I guess, until they see it virtually. You know, that's always a plus if you get some new people involved. Mm-hmm. Um, what is your favorite racing memory for you or anything that you've experienced? My favorite racing memory. Um, uh, I'd say probably my first my first win ever, probably mm-hmm. in the go karts. Yeah, that was uh, you know that that was definitely. Mm-hmm. I didn't even mean to win. I didn't actually. I I didn't cross the finish line first. You know, uh, I got in a real bad wreck that night, and I was I was only I was seven. I was my first year, mm-hmm. and I. Got real bad racked in the go-karts, and I was scared, didn't want to go back out. And, you know, my stepfather finally convinced me to go back out, and I, I went out there, and I finished third, but the guys that were leading were running into each other at the line, so um, they got disqualified and yeah. didn't win. Um, nobody was there, just my stepfather and I, too, so we had all the bragging rights in the world when we got back. Mm. Uh, if you could race against any driver, past or present, asphalt, dirt, Supercross, anything like that, who would it be and why? If there's a list, feel free. Um, I want to race against David Towns um, just because, you know, he's, he's been, like I said, I grew up in his garage. I, I watched him race. I, I'm in his, all his old wind pictures and everything. And I just like to see what, it, what it's like and, you know, how he runs. It's different when you run behind somebody, you know what I mean? You can, mm-hmm. you know, see how they drive and all that and, you know, he was really, really good, so I always wanted to, you know, know how he drove and everything. But um, I'd like to race Jack Leonard too, just so I could beat up on him a little bit. <laughs> mm-hmm. uh, uh, do you have a nickname? Uh, they used to call me Nick the Quick when I was in, in go karts, mm-hmm. but uh, I seemed—I don't know where it really came from, but I, I kind of adopted the name of uh, the BP Bullet. Okay, well, that's then you here. don't. Okay, yes, yeah, so I was gonna ask how you got it. Um, what other hobbies do you enjoy besides racing? Um, I, I'm a huge fan of, you know, four wheelers and and dirt bikes and, you know, outdoor power sports, things like that. I have a good time doing things like that and, you know, hunting and fishing and, you know, any, anything outside really, I'm, I'm big into, Mm -hmm. you know, just, just anything like that. You know, being outside is, is something I like to do. So, so whereabouts are you going to be racing this season? If we get going, um, I'm gonna be back at Fonda again, um, and depending on, on uh, obviously, like you said, if, if we even get going again, yeah, um, I'd like, I, you know, I'm almost thinking about, you know, getting out of racing. Uh, yeah, I've done it since, like I said, I've done it since I was seven. It's, it's been 13 years of every single summer, you know, getting thrown away, not thrown away, but you know, I, there's other things I'd like to do. Um, yeah, I don't know. I... Tough to say. Yeah, it's it's tough. Mm-hmm. Um, would you get to race in a big block if you could? Would you race into a big block? Absolutely, I would totally get in a big block tomorrow if somebody gave me a ride. Mm-hmm. Uh, what are some like dream tracks for you as a driver? Um, I'd like to put the pedal down at uh, Oswego. I really want to do that. Um, you know that's that's not too far. Uh, out of reach, really. You just got to scuff up some money for that. Mm-hmm. Um, but I would really like to go to Knoxville. I'd like to go to, you know, Selins Grove and, uh, you know, uh, probably Atomic. I want to go to Atomic once. Mm-hmm. Um, so, yeah, that's all. I think that's all I really have here for you. Uh, you got any questions for me? Uh, I don't think so. All right. Well, thanks for being on the show today. I appreciate it. Not a problem, anytime. All right. Uh, Good luck this year if we get going. Yeah, thank you. Appreciate it.
All right. Thank you. Bye. No And that was uh, sportsman driver Nick Scavia. He will be racing at Fonda this year. And, um, yeah, awesome to have drivers on. And if you are a driver and you are watching this, and I haven't had you on the show, make sure you guys please hit me up. I'm on Twitter. I'm on Facebook. I'm on Instagram. I'm on Snapchat. I'm on TikTok. I'm on everything, pretty much any social media. Look up out of the fast lane YouTube, and I should come right up. Just DM me, send me an email, whatever you want to do. Um, and then one of the only thing is, uh, please make sure you guys like and subscribe, comment. We're on the road to 100. We're up to 55, which is awesome. Yesterday we were at 50, and we gained five just overnight. So that's really good. I appreciate everybody that's doing that. Um, if you guys did like this video, like I said, make sure you guys like it. Um. Uh, and make sure you guys hit me. If you are a driver, again, like I said, just hit me up. I will I will add you to my schedule of drivers. We have quite a few drivers coming on. Friday, we have NASCAR driver Stephen Light joining us. He will be on Friday because tomorrow the Xfinity race got canceled last night. So tomorrow at noon, the Xfinity race will be on at Darlington. And he is racing that. And then Friday, we're going to talk to him about his experience at Darlington. See what he thinks about everything that's going on. And we're going to talk a little bit about, to him about his career. And all that. And uh, yeah. So I thank you guys for watching. It, um, make sure you guys like and subscribe. And uh, take care.